and it creates most of the problems that we're actually trying to get rid of with the motion that we're creating. So we're trying to fight tightness with stretching, but really stretching is creating the tightness. Michael, what are you going to do to get this across to the sports people? I mean, this is totally new. And how how successful have you been able to, like you've written you've written Stretch Re- Revolution. Have you written anything else? Articles. I mean, how do how do you get your word out? This is really technical, but it's really breakthrough technology. Yes, and what's scary is how simple it really can be, but yet how much it is not known. Uh, there, there are a few articles, again, in, in the Brady Times, I think Sarasota Tribune from a couple years back. Um, again, the Stretch and Revolution book is out. I do have another book coming out. Um, it's called Tamagoy, and it will incorporate uh, the good stuff of yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, and therapy all in one. Wow. That's- Fantastic. So do you do little demonstrations and talks uh, to sport teams or anything like that? I mean, I don't know. Once I mean, it, we just learned from our coaches when I when I was on a team. Uh, right. When we And those coaches learn from their coaches and those coaches learn from their coaches and they, they have <laughs> the same bad habits. And we continue to do it today simply because that's the way it's always been done. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I do talks uh, at gym. I do talks for different doctors that I work with that that get it and they invite me in to talk to their people Um, and I have been out to the the Baltimore training camp facility I've tried going to different golf courses and and but they they um they have a hard time if they have a system in place they have a hard time going against the system they've always been using well except for parents they don't want their children's children to be injured. Now, the case with the, the young man, he wasn't able to come back, but the, the gal who worked with you, she was. So those kind of testimonials must really work well because word of mouth and testimonials such as that are great forms of, you know, reaching. So how oh, did yeah. that work out? So, mm-hmm. I've had some really great testimonies come out of the stuff that I do. Okay. So have, did other parents reach out to you that, that knew the girl or were you able to, uh, was the coach impressed? Because now one of his star players is coming back to play to play basketball. Uh, the people that get it, the people that ha- I had to say this, the people that have somewhat intelligence that get it, uh, they were able to send people over. Uh, we, the head, the coach and I, and the coach and her actually butted heads because what I'm saying went against exactly the opposite of what he was saying. So we kind of butted heads. So that never transpired anything positive. Oh, uh, so. so that's ego. Okay. That is we, ego. We, know that. <laughs> we see that happen in all ways. Wow. Well, I think that that's why you, you see how, you know, this philosophy, and it's really a technology that you've developed, um, has really, um, is, is a hard, it's a hard one to educate people because they have an investment, like you said. But let me ask you a question, Michael, because this might, this might help to open it up a bit. You found out about this technology somehow, some way. And I know that you traveled to get this knowledge under your belt. Can you give us a little bit about who else is doing it? What, how is this showing up in, in other areas? Who's um, teaching this? Well, I was introduced to this uh, through Greg Roscoff. He is the, the founder of Muscle Activation Techniques out of Denver, Colorado. He works with the the Denver teams, the, the football and basketball teams. Uh, he's the reason why Peyton Manning went to the Broncos because uh, Peyton Manning had his neck surgery and his neck issues that Greg Roscoff helped fix him so he could get back to playing. Um, so we do have people in the sports field on different baseball and football teams, uh, but it seems like you need to know somebody in order to get into that connection. So did you study with Greg? Is that what you're saying? Yes, and that was in Denver. Um, Tom Purvis with the Resistance Training Specialist Program out of Oklahoma City, uh, Chris Graney with Biodynamics in Connecticut, and I've traveled back and forth from all these places and many more uh, just to get the different classes and the the education I needed to do what I do. So there's people that are kind of onto this and they're they're working with people. So it al- almost seems like a consortium of um, of these types of practitioners need to band together to educate these um, these athletic teachers that are t- telling 
people to stretch for um, for relaxation and stretch for exercising, right? Uh, we are. We it's a very small circle. It is growing, and they will all tell you it's an uphill battle. Yeah. Well, you know, our theme for this week, for this month, as you heard, is about um, having fun and really um, a creative process. So you're in the middle of that creative process. And the thing to do is how do we make it fun for people? How do you make it fun for people? That's my question. All right. Well, if you want to, whatever you're about to do. So if you're going to go running, the nice way to, to prepare for running is just to walk or a march in place, something where the body is active. Because if you're stretching something, uh, you actually decrease blood flow. So it goes against the whole theory of stretching increases blood flow. If you sleep with your arm underneath you and you wake up with your hand numb, your hand is numb because you re you stretch the muscle uh, between your body and your and your, and your arm that, the, that restricted the blood flow. So if you want to create blood flow, just move. So if you want to go running, just march in place. And if you're going to go do bench presses, you know, just take your shoulders through the bench press motion, but without actually using the resistance and just create motion. You you need motion to get the fluid into the joint. You need motion to get the blood into the, the muscles. Adding a little bit of resistance on the inside, and that's what the Tamagoy book is about, that's what Stretching Revolution is about, is you have to change the force around. So rather than, let's say you, you pull on your elbow to bring your elbow to your opposite shoulder, rather than pulling on your elbow, if you put your hand on the inside of the elbow and gently push, that will contract the muscles on the pec side that releases the muscle on the back delt side and teach the body how to be in that position rather than forcing the body in that position. Because forcing the body into a position does not teach the body how to be there. But if you teach it, it works so much better and you move so much easier and feel much, much, much better. So, I, you know, I, have a, I coach a lot of clients on... Uh, I'm a health coach, but movement is part of health. And, uh, you know, I, I like them to make movement fun, uh, whether it's riding their bike or whatever, and that, that helps. Uh, but obviously a lot of people pay for personal trainers. They go to gyms. Now personal trainers need to know this because Absolutely. I mean, I've had, I've had personal trainers before and, um, is there a way that you can, uh, do you, do you teach personal trainers? Do you do, have you gone to any of the gyms and kind of, have a little program for them or and I'm just uh I think it I has to be really good yeah, mm -hmm. I do work with some personal trainers and uh -huh. Uh -huh. I teach them how to do this uh -huh. or if if they have a client who has some kind of problem uh, they uh -huh. will come see me okay, for me good. to have them and then I send them back for them to, for training uh -huh. and what about the elderly uh in, in my past career I did a lot of work with assisted living centers and um well, as you get older, we have a tendency to, um, well, you can, you will know more about this, but we, we say that we get hurt more easily, you know? So, um, so I've been thinking that this would be a great avenue as well. Yes, absolutely. Whether you're young, when I was doing this, my daughter was three years old at the time and I started working with her with it. And I have clients up in the nineties that I still work with. Nice. Uh, it's they get hurt because they're back to the stretching when you, okay, a muscle will only tear, like a rubber band will only tear when you pull it to the end of range and you keep pulling it. Now, depending on how sturdy the muscle or the, the rubber band is, you can put more force on it. But with the rubber band, you can look at it and you can see if it has any frays in it, if it's nicked or cut at all. But in a muscle, you can't do that. Right. So you don't know when your muscle is going to tear or how much your muscle, how much force the muscle needs before it tears, but it will only tear when you pull it to the end and you keep forcing it. But if you change the force around, there is no way that you're going to tear anything. So we can work with the, with the, and this works well with the older folks because um, they're, again, they, they get hurt because they're, they do get fragile because they're not used to the resistance. They have, they kind of cut out resistance. Everybody needs some kind of resistance training, right. uh, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is where most, again, yoga and Tai Chi and, and um, water aerobics, they fall short of the, the resistance that the body needs to create strong ligaments, tendons, bones, and muscles. Right. Where they're, they have great for, for motion, in the long run, you actually get weaker if, if you're not using some kind of resistance to create the need 
to keep the muscle around. So wasn't that where rubber bands came in to be kind of more effective, especially for the elderly or so that they're not like they're having more control of the weight? Yes, bands are fantastic. They're a great exercise tool if you know how to use them. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Well, let me, I know that we're getting close to the end, Michael, and I really, um, you've really introduced like a, a very fascinating thing. I, I get your message is teach movement and don't force it. So I, did you have something that you wanted to share um, with uh, our listeners? Uh, how can they reach, how can they be in touch with you? And did you have something you wanted to offer for them? Uh, yes, uh, you can reach so through the website, www.stretchingrevolution, all one word, dot com. Um, and anybody who's through the show, who's listening, I will give you a free one hour move methodology evaluation and go through and show you, so, do an, a check of where you're tight, then test the tightnesses because the tightness will lead us to what's wrong or what's not working. Uh, so it's a head to toe examination to see how the body's moving, because we're going to ask the body how the body's moving, not necessarily you, because you feel one thing, and it's not necessarily what you feel is the problem. You only feel what's working. You feel what's working hard. You can't feel what's not working. So I'm going to go through and and show you what's not working, and then set you up on a program if if you choose to do so, um, or introduce you to the exercise world of it, because how we exercise, uh, there's a lot of things in the fitness industry that are just as backwards uh, when it comes to how you do exercise as well. Well, right. this has been fantastic. Thank you so very much, Michael. And I, you're going to change lives. I love it. I mean, I so have so already. It's cr- awesome. Thanks so, so much. thank you all for joining us today and be sure to listen in next time. Thank you.